Well, the Bruins have taken their annual little slide under Mick Cronin in the months of January or February. Now it's time for the Bruins to kick it into gear and get things cooking for the rest of the season. Let's talk about it. Locked on to UCLA. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, it's your favorite host, Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer. Thanks for tuning in to Locked On UCLA. It's free wherever you get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. So, like, comment, and subscribe there, or download whatever you get your podcast on whatever feed. Thanks for tuning in and making this your first listen each and every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and just know that FanDuel Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on right now today to get started. In the meantime, UCLA is on a bit of a slide. They've had a week off since they've taken on the USC Trojans. Two losses in the end of January and what was the hardest part of the regular season in my mind for the Bruins getting three straight row games to take on Arizona State at Arizona and then at USC in succession. So Mick Cronin, if you ever follow his media availability in between practices, wherever the team posts on Twitter, wherever you try to focus on whatever reporter, whoever posts the recording of his media availability, I always watch what he has to say. For Mick Cronin, he always talks about this end of January heading into February grind, where January seemingly is the toughest month for his teams. And just in general, to coach a team, they want to get lighter on their feet, go through drills once, and get teams ready and refreshed for the games. A large part is because UCLA has such a small rotation with Mick Cronin at the helm that you overwork these guys in practice, they're going to get worked out and get dunked on in games. And so far, the last couple of games, the Bruins have been out-muscled either late in games in the second half and also in parts, you know, you could talk about making jump shots. How fresh are these guys when it comes to their cold stretch these last few games, barring that Arizona State game where the Bruins had a late run to win that one? Either way, Mick Cronin talks about this little lull that happens in January. So, this being his fourth season, I decided to go back from his first season to now and look, what have the Bruins done in Pac-12 play? And notice that it's a little interesting considering the weirdness of the last two seasons with COVID of postponements, games being moved, or games straight being canceled and never made up. But still, let's take a look at what these January mid-conference season grinds look like before McCronin, as he's usually done so far in the previous three seasons, gets his team rolling and as hot as can be generally near the end of the year. In the first season, 1920, he was taken over for a team, a program slightly in disarray that hadn't truly been competitive since the end of the Ben Hallett era. We could talk about Steve Alford being the one hit wonder almost if Lonzo Ball and the Bruins could have gotten farther down the line past the Sweet 16 in Kentucky. But they didn't really do much in the Alford, Alford era. So Mick Cronin kind of reestablished relevance going 19 and 12 before the postseason was canceled due to the pandemic. In that 1920 season, UCLA, who already came into the conference season with about, what, six losses, suffered four losses in January, only two the rest of the season, went on a pretty lengthy winning streak in the middle portion of the Pac-12, and was arguably on the bubble and maybe one lengthy Pac-12 tournament run away from potentially, truly making an NCAA tournament run like we saw what they did the year after. So in the first year, four losses in January was the most losses UCLA has suffered in Mick Cronin's coaching career at UCLA with four losses, one and three to start Pac-12. So everything was going crazy that year, his first year, before he got the team ready and rolling through the end of the regular season, which ended up being the end of that season. The next year, UCLA slowly building. They suffered some early losses, building their case for the bubble in their final four run, only losing once in January, losing three times in February and March, yeah, somehow the Bruins had three losses in the month of March before the NCAA tournament and were able to make it to the Final Four. How remarkable that run was two years ago. But in February, in March, the Bruins actually played a little bit better in January. And you could argue based on the, the, tough, the toughness and the strength of schedule at that point, 
but UCLA was able to manage some key victories despite a couple of heartbreaking, crushing defeats in late second half collapses, which have happened a couple of times under Mick Cronin with big UCLA leads against teams who come back and just steal it late. UCLA then went on a late March run, first four to final four, and we know how that ended. Last year, with a returning team, a veteran product, UCLA, one loss in January, four losses in February, and that got the team rolling into an eventual Sweet 16 berth, which left us wanting more, but still the Bruins got to the Pac-12 title game and then were you know, a minute and a half away from potentially reaching the Elite Eight. And against St. Peter's, you could have thought maybe a Final Four run. But this season, it's the most losses he sustained as UCLA head coach in January since that first year. And in that first year, as noted, UCLA went on quite a run despite starting 1-3 in Pac-12 play. The Bruins a little bit different start considering Pac-12 play started in mid-December. The Bruins got those Washington school sweeps and were unbeaten until the most recent last couple of weeks to end January and are still in first place for the most part in Pac-12 play. But everybody is slowly creeping right behind them, waiting to pounce for any UCLA mistake and throw the Pac-12 first place up for grabs in the regular season, the one seed for the Pac-12 tournament. So what could think? Based on what's coming forward for the Bruins, you have Washington, Washington State, which could be different, tough matchups for a variety of reasons. If the Bruins can hold serve, you go to Oregon State, while place UCLA should expect to win. All of a sudden, as I've discussed before in recent episodes for Mick and UCLA and the team, that UCLA could very well be on a three-game winning streak heading into Eugene, a Saturday night matchup, which is their toughest game in the next six games. I mean. I do believe Washington State will be another tough test, but I truly believe that game in Oregon will prov- provide a tougher test than UCLA at home versus Washington State. But that Washington State's still a tough game coming up on Saturday. More on that in a little bit. Then you got the Stanford Cal games, the games against the California schools for just what the second to last time and their second to last year in the Pac 12. So these next six games can truly establish what UCLA is trying to do. And that true Oregon test will be the toughest in the next three weeks, if you include this week, before heading to Utah and Colorado and then getting the Arizona schools to come back and play the Bruins one more time at home during the last week week of the regular season. So if Mick Cronin kind of says, hey, we got our guys, we got those tough losses, do the Bruins play better as an underdog? Well, you could argue as with Mick Cronin, if they do enough, as they did in 2021, get in the tournament, play as an underdog, the Bruins can overachieve. Maybe if they're, you know, more of a favorite in a year where the number two team in the AP poll this year has gone down, I believe, 10 times, most recently with Tennessee, in a year with anything can happen, despite Purdue being solidly number one right now for a couple weeks, the Bruins can easily find their way deep into a tournament. They could also lose, Arguably in the first week with the bad eight, nine seed to if they're a one seed, seven, 10, whatever, you know, 50, whatever seed they, they get. It's all up in the air at this moment. Don't hold me to it. Whatever seed you get in the, the second round or dare I say they stumble more and get to a, a horrible first round seed. Dare I say a five or a six if things go completely off the rails to end the regular season. Maybe that would be a, a tough ending to this end for this regular season. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is Mick Cronin has proven he goes through these stumbles, whether it be in January, in February, in March, or February, despite him always harping on January, but he gets the Bruins in the right foot. And they have these next three weeks, or at minimum, the Bruins should be five and one. Four and two would be disappointing, but if you lose to Washington State and Oregon, based on what's happened so far, playing at Oregon, and what Washington State has been a thorn in many teams' sides, throughout the regular season, despite not always coming out with the win, you could argue a 4-2 and two stretch, all right, 5-1 and one better, but a 6-0 and oh is certainly not out of the cards and would set the Bruins up for success and regain trust in the Bruins if they can find some offensive momentum heading into the rest of the season. That is key, and we'll talk about that and the Washington and Washington State matchups all coming up on Locked On UCLA. But let's talk about FanDuel because, you know, they're the new official sports book sports betting partner for Locked On, the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that makes betting on sports fun and easy. 
Just download FanDuel right now, and you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You can get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So just know that the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and easy to use. Your winnings get paid instantly, which is why go to FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL, and hey, with us with Locked On. Cruising on into segment two of Locked On UCLA, Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer here talking UCLA men's hoops today. The Bruins have a key week, a stumble this week against the Washington schools, and it won't be impressive considering how they ended January with a bit of a thud in the worst way offensively, going quiet in the second half versus Arizona and another second-half collapse against USC. But the Bruins get some more rematches. It's their second week of rematches, round twos, versus teams they've already played in the early portion of the pack. So most importantly, they get these teams at home, where the Bruins have not lost since last season to Oregon, and have not lost at home with fans officially in attendance since before the, the 2021 season, back in 1920. Before the pandemic. So the Bruins come in 70, 17 and 4, 8 and 2 in the Pac 12 in first place, just barely in the Pac 12, but 11 and 0 at home, taking on the Washington Huskies. So we'll make this brief considering the Huskies are coming to town uh, February 2nd, today, the day I upload the episode. And the Bruins, for the most part, held their fair end with Washington, a 74 49 win. The Bruins led by nine at the half and eventually closed them out by outscoring the Huskies by 16 in the second half on New Year's Day in early January after the close win the two days before against Washington State. So you flip the two teams. Washington comes in 13-10, and and 5-7 in Pac-12 play, but they just beat ASU at home and competed for a half with Arizona before being blown out in that second half. Got to look at Keith Brooks Jr. And I believe what... McCrone has been saying in media availability has been saying no Williams, no Williams will be a key part for Washington late in games, considering he was just coming back to the Huskies in his minds uh, when the Bruins first played them in the beginning of Pac-12 play in game three in four for the Bruins in Pac-12 play. But the Huskies, they play a zone, which will probably mean, as McCrone seemingly alluded to, we'll see David Singleton in the starting lineup barring any switches, and we'll still see Amari Bailey, who did put up double figures against SC in his first game back in almost a month and a half since he missed the first part of Pac-12 play. The Bruins will face the zone and should have the physicality and the size down low to dominate. Braxton Mia is the one guy that put up 20-7 and against the Bruins in game one. Nobody else scored double figures against UCL except Braxton Mia, and you would think if the Bruins can established their physicality in the post in that game. Adem Bona put up 18 points to counter those points in the paint against Washington. And the Huskies, they went 2 of 25 from 3. You could say that's a fluke. The Huskies could certainly get hot, and I, I promise you they could, but I just don't think it's likely. And if Singleton shoots well and as Mick Cronin establishes and really emphasizes passing the basketball, beating the zone involves passing the ball around the zone, getting to your easy spots in the paint, finding the open shooter, which would be Singleton. The Bruins could have a field day if they attack this zone fairly easily. And if Bailey comes in off the bench, gets a good dribble drive, UCLA could be in for a fairly confident victory against a Washington team who is amongst the bottom of the Pac-12 when it comes to turning over the basketball. And despite having a winning record when turning it over 15 or more times against UCLA, when the two teams faced off in early January, Washington had only 13 turnovers, but still the Bruins will turn you over and turn it into points off turnovers. And for the most part, UCLA thrives off that, which is not what they've been doing all this last couple of games against USC. They turned the tables and made UCLA the team coughing up the basketball, turning into points directly. So for UCLA gets a turnover prone Washington team against Keith Brooks, Jr., the Kentucky transfer who they shut down once. Uh, a pretty beatable player in the post in Braxton Mia, in my opinion. I've seen the Huskies in person, and I was not impressed when I saw them, even 
with a guy or two out. The, the Bruins should win this game, and they should win this game by 15. E- even if it's a close game, yeah, we, they've been playing better as of late have the Huskies. But I think the tougher the two schools to play will be on Saturday against Washington State. However, we'll talk about the Husky game when the Bruins finish that one off. We'll talk about either late after the game or we'll talk about it Friday. Either way, with Locked on UCLA, we will react to that. And for a Husky team that has lost 16 straight games against the AP Top 25, the Bruins look to make that 17 and continue to dominate at home and get to 12-0 and in Pauley Pavilion. Not too much other than the Bruins should dominate, get points in the paint. Washington does not have the physicality, in my mind, to really stop UCLA from getting Jalen Clark, as Mick Cronin says, eyes on the rim, not shooting with eyes off the rim, but eyes on the rim shooting, easy finishes in the paint. That's what UCLA should emphasize. We like to see Singleton hit three to four threes tonight, but getting points in the paint like Adem Bona did last time would be a nice, easy road to reestablishing how easy it can be to score for the Bruins, especially against teams that aren't Arizona with two seven-footers, or even USC, who didn't use their seven-footers as much, but they do have two seven-footers as well. And the most part, take care of the basketball, turn it into turnovers for the opposition and get easy points. I'm thinking this is an easy game. It should be an easy game for UCLA. Perfect one when you have Coach yelling at you for a week to recalibrate your mind and go out and dominate. Now, as we breathe in, time to talk about the Cougars for a little bit. We'll talk about Washington State as well as we transition into segment three for Locked On UCLA. Washington State is kind of the snake-bitten team in the Pac-12. You can't really figure them out. They're 10-13, and 5-7 and seven in Pac-12 play. But I'm more afraid to play Washington State at home than I am for UCLA to play Washington at home. Although Washington State only won in six in true road games. Their only road win was beating Arizona by 13 on the road and almost got them again at home in Beasley Coliseum last week while they and Washington both were able to sweep Arizona State. So for Washington State, it's a unique matchup considering the Bruins. It's not a, good, it's not a zone that they'll face against Washington. Washington State does have some post presence. They have some big bodies, and they very well should have beaten UCLA the first time, but Amari Bailey didn't play in that game, just like he didn't play against Washington. And going in, nobody really knew, hey, Amari Bailey's not playing. He's not suiting up. And lo and behold, the Bruins had to scrap from behind, outscore the Cougars by six in the second half on the road, and win that one 67-66 in a late-night game to kind of get us to breathe after that heartbreak versus Pitt in the Sun Bowl. Bruins had Hawkes, Tiger, and Singleton all put up double figures. Again, Jalen Clark, that was kind of the beginning of his struggles offensively in the bit of the restart of Pac-12 play where he went from, what, 16 and a half points per game to, I believe, closer to 10 points per game in conference now for Clark, and the shooting averages and the efficiency has gone down. Yes, in conference, it's tough to play offensively. I believe Tiger Campbell alluded to that in a recent presser. But still, you want to see your be- one of your best players, your MVP in my mind, get better like Jalen Clark. So what does Washington State pose that can be so tough? Well, Muhammad Gay put up 18 in 18 against UCLA. That is just unstoppable. If you're going to let someone put up 18 rebounds and just be unstoppable in the post. That was what almost led Washington State to win considering they out-rebounded the Bruins by nine. Didn't overly turn over the basketball, but it was a clean game by the Bruins the last time these two teams played with six rebounds. And another name to keep up for the Cougars coming into this one wasn't really a factor in game one. Andre Yakimovsky has been playing a lot better as of late recently. Yakimovsky, the junior from North Macedonia, 6'8 forward, put up 22 points against Arizona State, 17 against Stanford, and 12 against Colorado. Albeit against Utah and Arizona, he scored eight points combined. So the 6'8 forward could truly determine how he plays and make a difference for that game. He is a three-point shooter, made five threes against Arizona State, five threes against Stanford, and two against Colorado. So all those games he made multiple threes, he scored in double figures. However, against UCLA, in 19 minutes, he only scored four points. So Yakimovsky could be a guy for... Washington State that can make a true impact for the Cougars if the Bruins are able to contain Gay. Last time it was DJ Rodman who was a very important piece 
for the Cougars that almost led them to an upset win against the Bruins at home, where he put up, I believe, 19 points against UCLA on 7 of 10 shooting and hit a couple of threes. So between Rodman and Gay, the Bruins have their test cut out for them. But I think a guy that could really make a, a difference, if you don't even look at TJ Bamba, who had a quiet game against the Bruins, it's Andre Yakimoski. had a good couple of games. If he gets hot from three, the Bruins could be in for a rough one defensively. A 6'8", three-point shooter with all the focus going on Gay. Washington State, just a weirdly tough team. Losing, what, a couple of weeks ago, I remember watching to Colorado practically at the buzzer with prime in attendance, I think. It, it was just a weird, tough season for Washington State where they've had so many close calls could very well be a dark horse and they could very well go and make a run in the Pac-12 tournament and win it all and be a, you know, some, a bubble burster, right? They could be one of those stolen bids if they go on a run in the tournament. So Saturday's game will be interesting. We'd love to see Clark take over that game as well, but the Bruins have to rebound against Washington State considering they only beat the Cougars by one and took a late defensive stand, a late steal and a goal 10 on a game winning a Dem Bona layup attempt to win that game in transition in the final 20 seconds against the Cougars. So for the Bruins, a pair of five and seven teams, the matchups look differently despite the overall records. I think the Washington State game presents itself to be a lot tougher of a challenge. Washington should not, but again, you never know it's Pac-12 play. And what if Washington doesn't go to 25 from three? It could be a completely different story. Who knows? We just have to see how the Bruins come to play with a week off with the frustration boiling after back-to-back -back crushing losses, in my mind, to Arizona and USC, where they very well could have if they played and shot much, much better in those second halves of those games. UCLA could have won one, if not two, of those games. But still, credit to those teams, the Wildcats and the Trojans, for shutting down the Bruins. We'll see if UCLA can hit some shots in these games coming up for UCLA. Next six games, fairly winnable. Oregon, I think, is the toughest. Washington State, the next toughest but UCLA should get rolling by the end of this week. In the meantime, we'll react to the Washington game as soon as it's done. And for UCLA fans, go check out all the Locked On NFL draft coverage for the Senior Bowl. You have a good old DTR doing some things over there. Apparently just got a new record with the passing records after stat adjustments. And then go check out Locked On College Basketball when it comes to college basketball specific coverage heading into March. Get those brackets ready and win all your brackets. Meantime, I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, signing off. Get your hands in the air, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.